Welcome to our service of morning prayer at All Saints Anglican Church in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. Today is the eighth Sunday after Trinity and the feast day of St. James the Apostle. Wherefore, seeing we are all so compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race which is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Please join me in the opening prayer. O Almighty God, who has, has called, called us, us to faith in thee, and, and has compassed us about, about with so great a cloud of witnesses, witnesses. Grant that we, encouraged by the good examples of thy saints, may persevere in running the race that is set before us, until at length, through thy mercy, we, with them, attain to thine eternal joy. Be with us as we worship you this day, and this we ask through him who is the author and finisher of our faith, thy Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We, we have, have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We, we have, have offended against thy holy laws. laws. We, we have, have left, left undone, undone those things which we ought to have done. done. And, and we, we have, have done, done those things which we ought not to have done, done and there, there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty Father, who of thy great love to men didst give thy dearly beloved Son to die for us, grant that through his cross our sins may be put away and remembered no more against us, and that cleansed by his blood and mindful of his sufferings, we may take up our cross daily and follow him in newness of life until we come to his everlasting kingdom. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And, and our mouth shall, shall show forth, forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As, As it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, now, and ever shall be, world without, without end. end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's, Lord's name, be, name praised. be praised. The Lord is glorious in his saints. O, o come, come, let us worship. worship. We say together the Venite. O come, let, let us, us sing unto, unto the Lord. Lord. Let, let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. salvation. Let, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. 
unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pamela will now read the first lesson. The first lesson is written in the Acts of the Apostles, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 27th verse. In those days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them, named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there would be a great famine throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of the Emperor Claudius. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to do evil to certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Here ends the first lesson. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 116, said responsibly by the half verse. My delight is in the Lord. Because, because he, he hath heard, heard the, the voice of my prayer. prayer. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The cords of death compassed me round about. And the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and heaviness, and I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was in misery, and he helped me. Turn again then unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. My eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord. In the land of the living. I trusted even when I spake, but I was sore troubled. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What reward shall I give unto the Lord? For all the benefits that he hath done unto me. I will take the cup of salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Right dear in the sight of the Lord. Is the death of his saints. Behold, O Lord, how that I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast broken my bonds in sunder. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. In the presence of all his people. Even in the courts of the Lord's house. And in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Piper will now read the second lesson. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 32nd verse. They were in the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was going before them, and they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. And he took again the twelve and began to tell them what things should happen unto him, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. And they shall mock him, and shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. And James and John, the son of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, what would that shouldest do for us whatsoever we so desire? And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit, one at thy right hand, and the other at thy left hand, in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized withal shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, 
but it shall be given to them for whom it hath been prepared. Here ends the second lesson. We say together the Benedictus, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art Lord, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Collect for the feast of St. James the Apostle. Grant, O merciful God, that as thine holy apostle St. James, leaving his father and all that he had, without delay was obedient unto the calling of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and followed him. So we, forsaking all worldly and carnal affections, may be ever more ready to follow thy holy commandments through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, whose never failing providence ordereth all things both in heaven and earth, we humbly beseech thee to put away from us all hurtful things and to give us those things which be profitable for us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and a lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in this same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, 
but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The sermon will now be given by the Reverend Bob Cheatley. Every six or seven years, a particular Saint's Day falls on a Sunday, and it seems the right thing to do to use the prayers and texts assigned to that day. After all, every one of us is called to be a saint in following Jesus and in the way that we manage our lives. Today is the feast of Saint James the Apostle, the brother of John the Evangelist. There are important things that we know from Holy Scripture about St. James that should make him worthy of our study. For instance, he is the one, who, one of the first ones called by Jesus to be among his 12 disciples. He was also part of Jesus' special three, Peter, James, and John, who Jesus spent extra time with in developing them for future ministry. And after the death of Jesus, he is the first of the 12 to be martyred according to the biblical record. The martyrdom of James, as recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, is the only mention of the martyrdom of an apostle in scripture. To be an apostle means to be one who is sent, and to be a martyr means to be a witness. Some, like James, became martyrs unto death, as we're told in Acts that Herod had him beheaded. Others, like his brother John, faced trials and persecutions in their witness. John was a martyr at will, willing to die for the gospel, but that was not his future. When Jesus called his disciples, he knew that he was calling them to die. While it may have seemed an honor to be associated with Jesus during his ministry, being an apostle for Christ clearly was the path that would lead to continued conflict with the political and religious authorities as well as the people. All of the disciples, except John, died a martyr's death as far as we know. So what did the disciples really know about what they were signing on for when Jesus called them? You will remember the story of the miraculous catch of fish in Luke 5. Jesus sent Peter out on the lake after a night of catching nothing and supernaturally orchestrated an incredible catch of fish. So many fish were caught that the brothers, James and John, his partners, had to bring their boat and help Peter land all the fish. Then Jesus called them to be his disciples. They knew that he was the real deal. They left everything to follow him, to become fishers of men. During his ministry, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him on special assignments that the other disciples did not participate in. Mark tells us that when Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, he let no one follow him except Peter, James, and John. Jesus took only Peter, James, and John with him up the mountain when he met with Moses and Elijah and was transfigured in their presence. Here they witnessed his glory in a physical way when he became radiant and the voice of God spoke over them. What a privilege that must have been. In our gospel lesson in Mark 10, Jesus and the disciples were on their way to Jerusalem. This was the final trip in which Jesus would give his life as a once for all sacrifice, a ransom for many. Mark tells us that Jesus was walking ahead of his disciples, spending time on his own rather than walking with them and teaching them as would be his normal way. Perhaps Jesus was thinking through the events that might be ahead. Possibly he was prayer walking, seeking God's help. In any event, we are told that the disciples were both amazed and afraid. This was not like Jesus. Jesus then warned them for the third time of what was to happen to him. He said that the Son of Man will be condemned to the chief priests 
and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. Then they will mock him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. And three days after, he will rise again. Did the, did the apostles understand that these events were imminent? In what happens next, James and John ask for special places of honor in his kingdom. Now, it makes sense that they thought that Jesus would first of all bring about his earthly kingdom. Jesus was always talking about the kingdom of God, and the expectations of the people were that the Messiah would come to bring salvation to God's people. The old Hebrew concept of salvation was different than what we understand today. Based on what we know about the resurrection, we see salvation as something that is actualized when we die, and eternal life with God is a heaven-based salvation. The full realization of the kingdom of God is a future event that is entirely in God's timing at the end of all things. But for the Jews, salvation was usually a temporal salvation a deliverance or rescue in time and place. For example, Moses leading the people across the, said, the Red Sea with the Egypt, Egyptian army in a hot pursuit was God's salvation in time of need. The people were brought to safety by a deliverer, by Moses, with God's supernatural help to part the Red Sea so they could escape across a dry ocean floor. The Jewish people's expectation of a Messiah at the time were that a deliverer would come to rescue Israel from the oppression of the Romans. The priests and people generally imagined a military-like figure, perhaps like Judah Maccabeus, who defeated the occupying Greeks centuries earlier, earlier before the Romans came. The, the disciples had come to believe that Jesus was the Messiah and to trust in him. That matter was settled at Caesarea Philippi when Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say I am? And then he asked, who do you say that I am? Even though he didn't look like that military Messiah that most expected, they still thought that he would establish his kingdom and that he was the one who would deliver Israel from her oppressors. Jesus confirmed that way of thinking in Mark's gospel account, when in chapter nine, he said, truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God after it has come with power. That expectation of deliverance from the Romans was behind the question that the brothers, James and John, the son of Zebedee, asked Jesus. They want to sit at his left and at his right when he comes into his glory. They were not thinking about the heavenly banquet as we might from a post-resurrection perspective. They were thinking that Jesus would establish his headquarters in Jerusalem, perhaps right in Governor Pilate's palace. If trouble came for Jesus in the way that he foretold, it would perhaps be a future event after he had put all things to rights. However, that is not the way that things unfolded when Jesus and his disciples went to Jerusalem. They were immediately thrust into the events of Jesus' arrest and crucifixion, his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven 50 days later. There would be no messianic Trump triumph and no sitting at his left and right in places of authority. The apostles were catapulted into their mission to spread the good news to all the earth. Isn't that the way that it is for us when we think that we know this is the way things are and that things will go in a certain way? That was probably the case for many of us before COVID-19 arrived and altered the course of our lives. Our lives felt more predictable in more stable times we thought we knew how things might unfold. As COVID continues, wildfires rage, 
Floods devastate parts of the world and storms and earthquakes seem to increase in their frequency and severity, we cannot predict the course of life and nature in a changing environment. Social and political unrest at all levels in societies and government also leads us to realize that we have a very highly uncertain future. In these catastrophic and confusing times, the world is looking for hope. As Christians, we have good news to share with the world. Just as the apostles were launched into an uncertain future with their fledgling apostolic vocations and faith as small as a mustard seed, so too are we, the church, sent out with the gospel. We are called to carry the good news of Jesus into our families, communities, and beyond into our world. To do so can be as simple as inviting people to believe in Jesus, to love God, and to love their neighbors as themselves. As our world is opening up and people are coming back out again, let's plan to be ambassadors for Christ in welcoming people into our churches and where appropriate into our homes and into our lives, that Christ may be known and that many may come to salvation through putting their faith and their trust in Jesus. Amen. And now, Linda will lead us in the intercessions. Let us pray. Having listened to the word of God, let us now call upon our Father who made us, the Son who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who renews us as we bring our petitions. Let us pray for all the Christian churches in their search for unity, that their oneness will show forth the unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for world leaders that they may guide us with wisdom and truth, remembering those who govern us, Elizabeth, our Queen, and the Governor-General-designate Mary, Justin, our Prime Minister, John, our MP, Blaine, our Premier, Kathy, our MLA, and Brad, our Mayor. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for peace among the nations, remembering those in places of conflict, especially Haiti, Syria, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Ukraine, Palestine, Cuba, and South Africa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the indigenous peoples of our nation, for healing and reconciliation, especially as they and we mourn the loss of their children, their culture, and their traditional lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all Christians, especially those whose faith is tried and challenged, and those who suffer persecution. Let us pray for all who minister, both lay and ordained, especially Linda, our primate, David, our archbishop, Mark, our indigenous archbishop, Matthias, our companion bishop, and our parish's clergy and lay readers. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for one another, our families, friends, and neighbors, remembering those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Kathy, Anne, Sydney, Teresa, Molly, John, and Alice, and belatedly Anna. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all who were sick, injured, or recently bereaved, remembering those on our parish prayer list, those suffering the effects of COVID-19, those who have lost loved ones in natural and other disasters, especially in the wildfires in British Columbia, that they will know the healing touch of Christ in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for those who work at hazardous occupations, especially those providing health care and essential goods and services during the ongoing pandemic, for the swift and equitable distribution of vaccines and other life-saving treatments and medications. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the faithful departed, remembering especially Andy Stewart, that in company with the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
St. Andrew and St. John the Baptist, our patrons, and St. James the Apostle, St. Anne, Olaf, and William Wilberforce, whom we remember this week, they may be joined to the communion of saints in your glorious kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, hear these and all our prayers. prayers. May, May the, the love that unites the persons of the Trinity shape our lives and the lives of all people. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit are one God forever and ever. Amen. We say together a closing prayer of thanksgiving. O most merciful Father, we humbly thank thee for all thy gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for life and health and safety, for power to work and leisure to rest, for all that is beautiful in creation and in the lives of your people. We praise and magnify thy holy name, but above all, we thank thee for our spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. May you have a blessed week and know the presence of God in his love, joy, and peace. To request weekly transcripts of each service in advance, email allsaints at nb.aibn.com.